I remember the very first case we had, and uh, I remember his name, I remember his face, pretty much everything about him. That was in 1983, two years after um, they, in America, in San Francisco in particular, first noted these extraordinary number of people with these infections that showed that their immune systems weren't working. So we knew sooner or later it, it was bound to happen here and it was two years later, as I say, when we admitted this young man who had one of these infections that we only really ever see in people whose immune system is fundamentally destroyed. And he was an extremely brave young man because we, he knew perfectly well we had no effective treatment at that point except for the infections from which he was suffering. We didn't have anything for the underlying condition. We didn't even in 1983 really know what the underlying condition was, just what it did to you. In the early days of the HIV epidemic in South Africa, again, the gay community was singled out as the people that had HIV, that was mainly because the people who were catching HIV in those times were white people with money who could go to get tested, and some of them were indeed um, um, sort of a gay people. But um, the epidemic in Africa as a whole, and South Africa specifically, is very much a heterosexual epidemic. When the HIV epidemic first started, um, it, amongst the majority black community, it was very stigmatised. It wasn't talked about. People just wasted away quietly in their houses. If anyone admitted to having HIV, they st stood a very real chance of being killed or stoned to death. And there were certain um, quite famous examples of that, of women who came out and said they were positive and were killed. There is now a danger that has become a threat to us all. It is a deadly disease and there is no known cure. The virus can be passed during sexual intercourse with an infected person. Anyone can get it, man or woman. So far it's been confined to small groups, but it's spreading. So protect yourself and read this leaflet when it arrives. If you ignore AIDS, it could be the death of you. So don't die of ignorance. The underlying message of the tombstones was safe sex, and it worked. And alongside the reduction in these other um, sexually transmitted infections, which at the time were, were very easy to monitor, there must have been a big reduction in the transmission of HIV as well. There had to have been. I think we've got some we've got some very very quick tests now, and I think uh, now that they're available, um, the the stigma of having to go along and have a, a blood test and wait weeks and weeks to find out the results, um, those days are, are past. There were certain very famous events that made a huge difference and I think the most memorable because she was so telegenic was Princess Diana when she embraced a so-called AIDS victim the term was still used in those days and you had this uh, picture that went around the world of this very beautiful woman and this young man wasted by this disease and she was just treating him as a fellow human being and that was extremely powerful
I, I've never in my working life seen such a total transformation as happened um, when antiretroviral therapy became established. That was in 1996 and really everything to do with HIV is before or after 1996. The, the government did a lot of campaigns encouraging people to test which weren't in, in many ways successful because even if you had a test there was no treatment so people took the nihilistic view of what's the point, you're going to tell me I've got something I'm going to die anyway. But with the advent of antiretrovirals and with um, people seeing what antiretrovirals can do I, I noticed a huge change over my time there from a time when you couldn't get anyone te to test to a time now where people are coming forward and wanting to test. Firstly, if a person is not, not aware that they're HIV positive, then they can't do anything to protect their sexual partners necessarily of becoming infected. The second thing is if the, you're not aware that you're infected, then the, you're not able to access treatment. So from a virological point of view, uh, soon after infection, you have incredibly high amounts of virus in your blood, which then luckily comes down, but at that point in time, um, you don't know you're infected and you're highly, highly infectious. So that, that, that's very important to try and um, not only diagnose the undiagnosed, but also diagnose the newly infected patients. So those who, who were negative a week ago and now have got symptoms of, of